In an interview on The Ellen Show, Ronda Rousey said she had dark thoughts after she lost to Holly Holm in Australia last year, her first defeat since joining the UFC. Take a listen. Honestly, like my thought, I was like, I was like uh, in the medical room and I was like down in the corner, I was sitting in the corner and I was like, what am I anymore if I'm not this? And I was literally sitting there and like thinking about killing myself and then exact second I'm like, I'm nothing. I'm like, what do I do anymore? And no one gives a shit about me anymore without this. And, and um, to be honest, I looked up and I saw my man, Travis was standing there and I was looked up at him and I was just like, I need to have his babies. I need to stay alive. <laughs> That was like, really, that was You better stay alive. <laughs> and uh, I haven't told anybody that. I think I only told him that. Stephen A., what's your reaction to Rhonda's comments there with Ellen? Well, number one, I applaud her courage for admitting as much. Um, number two, um, I've always been one to feel very, very bad for not her losing, but how she lost. Uh, to get knocked out like that, to get beat up like that prior to getting knocked out. Uh, after being so dominant on so many levels, it, it was just, um, it was difficult to watch, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but then to take it a step further, to see the cynicism and the scrutiny aimed in her direction, doing talk radio on my radio show, being here with Skip every day, you know, seeing folks on, on, on social media and beyond and the kind of things that they were saying about her, I, ter I certainly understand uh, people's inclination to do such a thing because when you talk to talk but then you don't walk it, uh, it's a problem. We got on Cam Newton about that, etc. But here's the difference between a Cam Newton and a Ronda Rousey and stuff like that. In the sport of football, as Skip has pointed out on many occasions, as well as myself, it's the ultimate team sport. When you are a fighter, regardless of the team working around you, whether it's that squared circle or that octagon, depending on whether it's boxing or MMA, you are all alone come fight night. It's on you. And so whatever you do, whatever you feel the need to do to maximize your potential is something I cannot hate on. When I look at a football player or a basketball player or whatever, even though individual heroics can ultimately shine, Success can't come without assistance from others. You have to rely upon them in order for you to be as successful as you could possibly be because doing it by yourself ain't going to get it done. Whereas in boxing and MMA, it's all on you. You have to do it. You don't have any help when you're out there. And I understand that. And because of that, whatever bravado, cockiness or whatever that comes with it, whatever it takes to elevate you to that next level, I understand it and I don't condemn it, which is why I didn't condemn Floyd Money Mayweather when he talked the way that he talked or Muhammad Ali and when he used to talk the way that he talked. Uh, the list goes on and on so long as you back it up. When she couldn't back it up, I don't think it was that she lost. I think it was the manner in which she was dominated. She didn't just lose. She lost convincingly. She got knocked out. She was embarrassed and humiliated. And at that moment, when you also take into account the fact that, uh, you know, listening to Mike and Mike this morning, when they talked about how there was a history, you know, in terms of her dad committing suicide, if I remember correctly. Yep. And that kind of stuff. You have to now elevate your level of concern because that depressive state that kicked in with her, who's to say that it doesn't come from that similar DNA. And so we have to take it and treat it with the level of seriousness that it deserves, show her the proper respect that, and, and support that she deserves because she did so much for the sport. She's still doing so much for the sport and for female athletes globally as far as I'm concerned. And we just got to understand, have a level of appreciation and an elevated level of sensitivity because when she's willing to go on national television, clearly with tears in her eyes and her voice cracking and her talking about how she contemplated suicide, this wasn't some flip comment that she threw out there. It is clearly something that she was enduring at that particular moment. So I'm just happy she got through it. I'm happy that her man was there to be there for her while she was going through it and to sort of rescue her just by his mere presence from that particular moment. But I also think it's a cautionary tale for her. Be careful moving forward because 
it is possible that you could lose to Holly Holm again. And if that happens, how are you going to deal with that? I know that she can't, she can't think about it like that because you can't go into a fight thinking about the possibility of losing. But based on what she revealed, it's also important that she might need to think about it along those lines because you got to be able to handle that loss. She handled it this time around. There's no reason to believe that she can't handle it next time. But based on what she revealed, you just never know. So it's something that we all need to keep our eyes on and, and to make sure that we support her in the way that she deserves to be supported in terms of making sure that she doesn't go that route because it was scary mm. listening to her say what she said. Yep. It has been scary to watch. I'm going to remind you, though, our Ramona Shelburne wrote a story soon after she got rocked by Holly She Holm. was there. Yeah. She, she, she was, was there. there. But remember right. when, when she knocked on her door? This is, was it a week or so after? I forget what the time frame was. But that story indicated all of this. Yes, that, it did. That Ronda Rousey was having a hard time recovering, not just physically, but emotionally, from just getting shocked and devastated in a fight that clearly she thought she was going to win. And to me, I think this is a classic case of today in the society that Ronda Rousey has become a victim of social media and pop culture and Hollywood and, and all of the above that put her on a pedestal that she didn't belong on. She, she was portrayed as an invincible superhero and I think she knew deep down she wasn't all that but she tried to live the part she tried to act the part I, I've never seen more trash talk come from I'm gonna be objective about this just the way we would be with male athletes but yep. uh, did she not talk the biggest game you, you've ever seen I mean mm -hmm. she, she made Cam looked like nothing, like, like, just, just right? Okay. We had her on the show, and th this was finally, it came off, off as the classic case of the big bad bully that got punched right in the mouth because she, she portrayed herself as the big bad bully. Like, how dare you even think you could walk into the octagon against me? Remember what happened at the weigh in before the Holly Holm fight? She, she attacked her on Instagram after that, said, uh, Rhonda yep. did, and said, I told her that fake sweet act of hers, I can see right through it. You're going to get yours on Sunday night, which it was Sunday night in Australia, Saturday night here, obviously. Wow. Big words. And she ate them. And, man, uh, it, it, it stings to watch her have to go through this. But I, Stephen A., I, I'm not sure she can pick herself back up and do this again. I'm just Neither not I. sure. I, I don't Neither. know. I know they keep giving her more and more time, and Holly Holm is saying, hey, let's do this, you know, well, like in a reasonable time frame if we're going to do it again. Well, first of all, I applaud her for taking as much time as she needs. Skip Bayless, this was not a one punch, or in this case, a one kick knockout. No. Ronda Rousey got beat up. <sighs> Long, before she got knocked out, mm -hmm. she got beat up. I don't think that what you see Ronda Rousey going through or what she, what, what she verbalized going through is because she lost. I think it's because of how she lost. Yeah. What if it were a controversial decision? Sure. Or what if it was oh, non-controversial, but yeah. it was just a decision? Skip Bayless, she's sitting up here today. They're getting set for a rematch and all of that stuff, and I we're agree. fine. No, You're she right. got beat down. This was the same woman that admitted it took her, she said it would take her months before she could eat an apple again mm -hmm. because of how, you know, her face got, got shattered. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, when you look at it from that perspective, all I'm saying is she recognizes that she got beat down. So take all the time you need, because last time I checked, Holly Holmes is not just an MMA fighter, but she's a world champion she's a boxer. boxer. Yeah. Well, guess what? She's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. She's going to be right there waiting. You don't need to go back into that lion's den yep. until you're completely ready. And by the way, I don't know if you'll ever be ready for Holly Holmes because as either. Evander Holyfield is famous for saying, it's all a styles make fights. Yep. And Holly Holmes' style may be the kryptonite to whatever Ronda Rousey brings to the table. But the reason why I say 
It's not about her being a female where that level of mm -hmm. sensitivity should elevate. It's the family history, you know, with the dad and the suicide. It's the thoughts that she said that she had, and it's how palpable she came across when she was talking about wanting to take herself out of here because of how miserable she felt. When you hear stuff like that, I don't care about your gender or your ethnicity or anything. We, it, we're required as human beings to yep. step back and say, yo, that, that, okay. that's some serious stuff. I agree. Stuff. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I just want to add one thing quickly. I think this might be deeper than the loss, though. I think this is the first time her life's going so fast, and she has a chance to look in the mirror and say, okay, if I'm not a champion, what am I? What's my value? Will people still love me? And I think looking at evaluating herself, and I think when, sometimes when you hit rock bottom in life, and obviously I've never done that, this, this type of level in mm -hmm. front of the entire world, but you reevaluate, you reassess, prioritize, and I do think she'll come back stronger. I think she's a fighter, literally and figuratively, and I think if she was to lose Again, I don't think she would take it as hard as this past time. I think this well, will be one, a learning lesson from this. Molly, the only mm -hmm. thing that I would say to that, and I appreciate your comments, is that where I'm concerned is mm -hmm. that when she was talking to Ellen DeGeneres, who I love dearly, I love, yep. I love her show. We all when do. she was talking to Ellen DeGeneres, the one thing that threw me off was when she said, you know, what am I now? You know, nobody's going to love me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I wasn't aware that she cared about being loved. That was part of her appeal. I, but I didn't know that, you know, she wanted to be respected. She wanted to be feared, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. I wasn't aware that it was important for her to be loved yeah. until she said that. And if that's what's important to you, mm -hmm. well, then you, you're going to have, I mean, you might have a rough life at some point because you can't be about the business of being in the public eye looking to be loved because most of us don't get that. In this cynical world we live in, people hate you just because you're loved by, mm -hmm. by others. Yep. At least it appears that she's loved by her inner circle there, and you mentioned her having her, her uh, boyfriend there to support her. Yes. Thank you, guys. Who's a good fighter, by the way? Who's yes. a good fighter? Yes, yes. Fight. Yeah. For those comments, coming up.